Hello, good morning. Hope you all are doing well. So, in the series of this e lecture, I am going to talk about today uh, on astrosismology. So this astrosismology is made of two words, if we split it to two parts. So first part is astero and second is the seismology. So seismology we all know to, uh, to probe the interior of the earth using the seismic waves produced during the earthquakes. And aster is related to some star tremor or star quake. So if you combine both these was then astrosismology means probing the interior of the star using the stellar oscillations. So today I will tell about the how these stellar oscillations are detected and then how they are used to probe the interior of the star. Okay. So, uh, during this lockdown, most of you are um, confined inside your home. So, as a part of your exercise, you might be doing yoga. And here, what I want to show you that it, it is, it is, um, it is uh, generally it is um, accepted that our universe is made of the light, and we need to listen the. Um, this um, silence of uh, this universe using sound. So, using uh, the sounds, one can literally see the interior of the any star or any stellar objects. So, what So, if you see our uh, this uh, our universe is made of billions of galaxies, and in in, in a single galaxy there are billion, billions of stars, and our sun is one of the stars due to proximity. It is very interesting to uh, know about the sun, and there are four um, there are eight uh, planets those orbit around the sun. So, Earth is our uh, this uh, where we uh, live, so that is means uh, a planet uh, habitable, having the habitable properties. So and there are other planets: Mercury, Venus, Earth, uh, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. So they all are uh, they all are orbiting around the sun. So the sunlight generally falls on these planets and due to that light they shine. So our solar system if you see the sun also um, is very interesting object and we everyone wants to know that what is made of, what is the internal structure and if you see the sun it is a gaseous sphere and it is a it's core from where the energy is generated and it radiates from the core to the um, outer part and then at, at the out uh, at the outer uh, surface there is convection zone okay so the center is radiative and the outer part is convective so in as a uh, convection you know we have the um, these uh, currents con uh, id currents uh, a lot of noise is there right the convection can be easily understood in the form of the boiling of the water Right? A lot of boiling water kind of activities goes on the inside the sun. So, so from the sun, if you come on the earth, so there is, because we live on the surface of the earth, then it is very, uh, very interesting to know what is inside the earth. Right? So, but we cannot, we can dig the um, earth up to some extent, but it is very difficult to um, go beyond uh, uh, some limit means up uh, near to the core even. So what the seismology does, does that to use the earth, uh, these earthquakes, right? Generally we um, uh, feel these uh, activities on the surface of the earth. 
they produce at the inside the uh, these waves produce inside the earth and they come at the surface and shake to the uh, that uh, the uh, place where the um, quake is produced so the magnitude how how big is in richter scale sometimes we say that it's 4 in richter scale sometimes we say the 5 so it depends magnitude it says the magnitude during that um, uh, magnitude more energy related by the large earthquake so if it is 8 then we say that okay the earth in richter scale it is 8 then a lot of shaking is take place and then geologists what they do they use the local geology and amplify the shaking means shaking um, because the your um, uh, amplitude of the these waves are small then they, they amplify it to detect on their scale and Sometimes it happens that the uh, these strength of the these uh, earthquake. Uh, sometimes they, uh, they they shake the uh, our buildings and damage, right? And uh, then if you see here, here I have uh, here you see uh, this earthquake uh, uh, at. Um, So this um, seismic waves produced during the earthquake used to probe the interior of the earth. This technique is known as the geoseismology. So very, <clears throat> now I am coming on the music of the sphere. The music of sphere means the sphere also produced music. So 530 BC around BC before, you know Pythagoras is very famous for the Pythagoras theorem. What it does, if in a triangle, if one angle is the 90 degree and there are uh, three um, um, sides and their sides are related with the uh, this square of the hypotenuse is equal to square of the uh, sum of the square of the two other um, uh, two other uh, um, sides, right? So. But his contribution is beyond this. Then uh, this um, Pythagoras uh, theorem, what he can, what he said that there is a natural harmony to everything that music, mathematics, and physics are intimately related. Or music, mathematics, and physics are intimately related. In particular, it is believed that the motion of the sun, planets, and stars generate musical sound. Plato also said that a siren sits on each planet who carols a more sweet song agreeing to the motion of her own particular planet but harmonizing with all the others. It means according to the uh, Pythagoras, he said that each planet, each star has its own um, sounds, right? And they, 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 they uh, and if they uh, shift to the audible frequency, then we can hear them. I will come on that uh, uh, in next slide. So, what is the sound? Sound is nothing just as a pressure wave, right? The, uh, this compression and radiofraction, right? And it takes in the um, this level of the molecular uh, level, right? So, the sound waves, if you see in the very simple relation, is uh, sound wave is equal to under root uh, this gamma uh, T upon molecular weight. Right, so more frequent collision means more faster sound speed, and also because the sound speed is directly proportional to the temperature. So as that we increase the temperature, the sound speed increases. And similarly, when the because it is inversely proportional to the mean molecular weight, it means as the light uh, light for the lighter gases, the sound speed becomes faster. So, in case of the sun or on the stars, those are the gaseous spheres. We have, if we detect these sound waves, it means we can determine the effective temperature and mean molecular weight of those stars. That is the direct, means literally we can uh, see the inside the uh, star what is happening. So, then what are the various tools to, uh, to study these interior of the stars, right? So, there are various types of stars in our galaxies. Some of the stars are constant, some of the stars are variable. If I say the variable star means it's they, their light intrinsically vary with time, right? So these um, variable stars are basically divided into the two parts. One is the extrinsic, 
where the luminosity of the brightness of the star changes because of the external properties such as the rotation or eclipse these are the extensive right these are the extensive so some due to some rotation some spots on the surface of the star eclipse right and the other uh, um, other uh, group of the variable stars intrinsic where the brightness of the star changes due to its physical change in the star itself right and the, uh, then if we have the variable star then how to classify them we can classify them according to the their shape of the light curves for how uh, how periodically they are changing their light and the how much amplitude of the light variation is there so based on these um, um, uh, these um, um, class of the variable stars we are also further divided into the uh, various classes and in intrinsic there are one pulsating stars pulsation means expansion and uh, contraction like as a rhythm like a, or heart um, uh, rhythm the other is the eruptive variable like as in some cataclysm activities and these eruptive variables are um, uh, some eruption takes place like as in sun right and the other is extrinsic also uh, classified into two parts one is the eclipsing binary binary when one star eclipses the light of the other coming uh, from the other stars and also the uh, other um, uh, class is the rotating variables suppose some star is rotating and if there are some um, spots on the uh, surface of the stars then it's come whenever it comes on because uh, spot is some low brightness area it means it's uh, when it comes in the line of sight then it changes its line uh, light and we see the some light of the variation so then the, uh, also the pulsating uh, stars uh, here the pulsating stars are the most suitable candidate for the astroseismology so i will uh, again i will uh, here i have shown here the type of the uh, pulsating stars the cepheids they are very important uh, objects which have been used to determine the um, distance of the very um, far galaxies and for particularly uh, the hubble space telescope was launched to uh, find the new cepheid variable and the, in the same other uh, this rr lerner stars they are generally found in the globular cluster and similarly arbitrary stars the arbitrary stars are uh, they are long period variables and uh, but they also expand and uh, contract and other long period variable stars are there they are mira type semi regular so these classification or variable stars i have just see the three of the variable stars but here our uh, most more um, um, best suitable candidate for the astroseismology are the stars we show uh, the multiple periodicity means uh, they, they have the multiple mode of the oscillations because the oscillations will use to probe the interior of the stars because different oscillation uh, oscillation oscillation has different uh, periods and they probe the different um, uh, part of the star so here if you see here they, they, i have shown here one this animation of the extrinsic variables one eclipsing star one eclipse one star comes in the front of the other star and we see as a part of uh, result we see the uh, eclipse and it also depends upon the inclination of the orbit uh, to the line of the sight right so these eclipsing stars are very useful to determine their various parameters like as mass and it is very difficult to determine the mass of the uh, individual stars and then uh, these um, eclipsing binary are very important to uh, know the other parameters uh, like as if you know the mass then we can determine the radius we can determine the density of the star right so here i have shown the type of the uh, intrinsic variables the class of the pulsating variables pulsation here you can mm -hmm. say that the star is expanding and contract contracting and uh, as a result we see the um, uh, light variation uh, in the um, uh, in the um, uh, in the form of the light curve right so here we and the light variation can be detected into uh, using the two um, uh, techniques one is the photometry other is the spectroscopy in photometry we just uh, we just notice or detect the change in the brightness while in the spectroscopy method we see the uh, how the radial velocity is changing with the time right you know the doppler shift and you can see the how much radial velocity star is uh, the light is um, because the star is expanding and contracting so we see the change in the radial velocity 
So here the roughly speaking small but hot because as the temperature because the luminosity change is uh, directly proportional to the T power 4. So small means its uh, uh, temperature increases during the contraction and it becomes hot and expansion means when it um, cools. So these shipits vary are the standard candles to determine the um, distance of the stars. So if we if we detect any uh, shipit in any galaxies then we can determine its uh, distance because um, in nine, 1909 Levitate discovered that the shifit follows some period luminosity relations. So it, if we determine the luminous period then one can determine the luminosity. This is the direct method to determine the period of uh, to determine the luminosity of a star because if we want to determine the how what is the luminosity of the star means flux coming out from the surface of the star is very difficult. Because the whatever uh, we detect the photons coming from the star and they uh, are uh, detected at the um, uh, surface of the earth and then uh, there are many corrections we have to apply but here if we have a pe um, uh, periodic stars like a CFID we can uh, determine the period very precisely and if we know the period if we know the period then uh, using this relation we can determine the luminosity. And if we know the uh, luminosity, we can uh, place the stars in the HR diagram very precisely, and that tells about the evolution of star, uh, evolution stage of the stars. So this is very important. Um, these shipets are very important tools you know, for the astrosismology, though they are the um, monoperiodic. So, but they are very important for the um, uh, astrosismology in some. Uh, uh, suns that the week one can determine the radius of the stars, right? So there are many others apart from the shifts. There are many other indicator distance indicators like as uh, this radar um, technique and nearby stars. We can determine their distance using the parallax method. And there are main sequence fitting we do just to be fit the, um, the we have the theoretical um, uh, HR diagram and we have the our um, uh, stars and then we see the how far uh, there we can determine the uh, based on the these um, uh, main sequence fitting. In the nearby galaxies the shifted are the only the um, um, uh, tools to determine the uh, uh, distance of the galaxies and galaxy cluster can be uh, the distance of the galaxy cluster can be used the other uh, Technique like the two CP separation and uh, the other distant candles. Also, the supernova also used for the standard candles for the far uh, those uh, located in the far galaxies. So, <coughs> so um, pulsation or oscillation are both are the same things. So here now let me start with the one dimension um, uh, oscillation. If just a string, take a string. Here what you do, you have this, this is starting the two, uh, this uh, fixed to um, uh, this uh, side of this uh, string. Here we can see the uh, this string is going up and down. So this is the antinode and these are the nodes. So in the antinode we have the maximum amplitude and similarly here we can see the first overtone in case of the um, this string. And uh, um, here I just, it is worth to tell that the nodes, IIU of the nodes doesn't move, right? So at the nodes, their amplitude of variation is um, zero, um, almost zero, right? So here in animation, you can see here the fundamental, the fundamental here, the anti node is going maximum, amplitude is maximum. Here you can see in here the amplitude is zero, but they are, um, they are going up and down around this uh, uh, node. And here the anti node, right? So uh, here you can see the uh, there are fundamental period, there are first overtone, second overtone, and third overtone. In case of the string, these overtones are um, similar to the um, same as the harmonics, but in case of the um, uh, stars, this is not the case. So here you can see uh, this um, organ pipe in organ pipe, those we use um, uh, to generate the sound at our. Um, this even some you can find some doors here also in, in, in the form of the doors you can see here uh, means one uh, is open one part is open other is the closed and you can see the how the these nodes and anti nodes are um, uh, taking place and these are the oscillation simple taking oscillation in one day 
so from 1d to 2d uh, the in 2d we uh, we uh, just take the example of the drum right in two dimensional the oscillations the take um, the oscillations like as in one dimension only uh, in uh, x direction or in single dimension direction in 2d we see the uh, this oscillation in the x and y direction suppose if you um, uh, play a drum right and you will see that um, their nodes are the rim of the this drum right and in in the radial direction and in the um, orthogonal to this one it will go vertical up and down right so here you can see the various node and anti node here right so this is the two dimensional oscillation and the example is our drum tabla right so here you can see in the here you see the fundamental mode in 2d means these are the rim here you can see the rim of the uh, this um, drum and this going up and down right up and down uh, and here similarly here you can see the first overtone and here the second overtone so uh, the stars are the three um, dimensional oscillating bodies so here you can see the these are the um, these are the spherical spheres and they the huge we one can consider, uh, consider them as the huge musical instrument right because they are the gracious bodies and the uh, sound wave because there is medium and there is um, plasma is there they are uh, so then the sound waves can keep propagate easily right the star sound wave do not come outside from the um, uh, uh, this um, sun or star because there is no way and no medium right if they would have medium then definitely we could have uh, detect the sound wave directly but we detect them in the form of the photons just uh, the disturbance of the um, most or disturbance of motion of the stellar surface right so here i have seen, uh, shown here the uh, this 3d oscillation how the 3d oscillation uh, looks like in the stars and here you can see the various um, uh, this um, various layers of the stars right this is the um, center part and the various the nodes you can see here these are the nodes right so these nodes in the um, in the stars are in the form of the concentric cell right so it means one part is uh, here um, uh, one part is moving one direction and the other part is moving in the other direction right so here in uh, this nodes we have the um, uh, least amplitude and here in the anti nodes we have the maximum amplitude so here you can uh, you can understand in the form of these uh, diagram here this is the center of the star this is the radius and this is the fundamental means the star is just um, contracting and expanding right and here if you see one node is there then you can see at in case of the speed of radially pulsating stars radially pulsating star means the star contract and expand preserving its spherical symmetry so uh, the first um, overtones uh, locates at uh, 0.6 radius of the sun right or uh, pulsating stars and if, uh, so here you see this is the nodes and um, uh, uh, in the both and both side of the nodes moves in the opposite direction and here if you see the um, uh, this is the first overtone this is the second overtone here you see the two uh, concentric cell right one this one and this one one at 0.5 and other the 0.8 this is in simple um, uh, symmetric radial precession mode right where we find the first uh, um, um, overtone at 0.5 and other the 0.8 solar radius right <coughs> so these um, one can literally really see with sound right so um, you can see here um, uh, the um, uh, with ultrasound one can see the how the baby is uh, doing in the womb right so one can using the ultrasound one can map exactly map the um, uh, the health uh, health or the position or the uh, shape of the um, this um, um, baby huh? In the womb, and uh, uh, so this is a very uh, useful talk technique to see inside the um, because we directly we cannot see, right? So we using the ultra um, uh, sonic way we can uh, see the uh, this one um, inside this uh, womb, right? And similarly, if you see human, I'm speaking, and the frequency of my this um, this. Um, uh, frequency of my sound voice is uh, between 20 to 20 uh, thousand hertz it means if the frequency lie in these this range then only one can uh, hear me similarly the elephant 
rumble at 10 uh, hertz and the bet nowadays these are the bet are very famous right do uh, so everyone know about the bet and their frequency is 50000 hertz it means what they do they just generate the sound wave and it reflects from the uh, obstruction they uh, may face in their way so and then they guess that what is the clear where is the clear uh, uh, way where they have to move and similarly in case of the star the frequency is very small millihertz of the order of the millihertz in case of the sun you can say it's about 3.3 millihertz right so uh, different um, uh, frequency range of the um, uh, sounds i have shown here right and in case of the sun you can see here the um, uh, at the center of the sun the score you can see the various waves are uh, coming out and they are resonating inside the um, sun right and ultimately we, uh, we detect them in the form of the disturbance <coughs> so so you know all, all of you might be knowing about the Addicton, this very great scientist and he wrote very nice book, The Internal Constitution of the Stars. So in the first paragraph, what he has written in his, this um, book, our telescope may probe further and further into the depth of space. It means if you want to, if you want to um, see more uh, far galaxy, then we need to big telescope like as um, TMT and ELT. So we have, if we have the big telescope, we can see further. We can detect further objects. But how one can ever obtain certain knowledge of that which is hidden behind substantial barriers, what appliances can pierce through the layers of the star and test the condition within. Doesn't matter we you have the big telescope, the 30 meter telescope, 50 meter, but how to see inside the star? So what, what is the technique one can use to see the inside the star? That is the astroseismology, right? So this is the beauty of the astroseismology. So using the uh, astrosism in the stars, one can uh, literally see the in, uh, you know, within the star, right? So what is the astroseismology again? The analysis of the stellar oscillation enabled to study the stellar interior because different modes penetrate to different depth inside the star. So if we have the fundamental mode, then it will uh, go through the center. If we have the higher um, overtones, then we they, they will deflect from the, you see, they, they will deflect from the, um, not they will not uh, process to the uh, center. You see, this is the fundamental mode is crossing uh, to the, um, uh, this um, center. One can determine the radius of the center. If we have the uh, fundamental frequency, then we can um, know the radius of the star using this technique. But the higher frequency, they reflect and they they just um, confined into the uh, outer surface so one can see the condition within the uh, outer part using the higher frequencies right so you can see here the star act as a cavity you can see so this is the uh, the core of the star right so one can see the how the concentration is in uh, inner part of the star so, sun, as you know, very famous. Uh, so we all know about the sun. This is the let me let me start with this seismology with the sun. And so, in the, due to the proximity, one can easily um, resolve it, right? And one can do the global as well as the local seismology. So, the technique, if we apply on the sun, this is called the helio seismology, right? Helio means something related to the sun, and seismology to probe the interior of the sun using the uh, waves generated at the surface of the um, uh, sun right so in case of the sun as i told you the uh, this outer part is the convection so due to the convection right the acoustic waves generated and we see the uh, they, uh, they here we can see the how uh, these um, uh, waves generated inside the uh, sun right and they, they 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 just confine the outer part of the uh, convective zone but there are some uh, there are some evidence or people are th people think that uh, we do have the some evidence of the uh, these um, uh, modes or the here i have seen there are g modes and t modes the p modes here you can see where the exerting force is the pressure right 
and the g mode the way the exciting force is the bouncy because if some oscillations um, uh, excited and then they may damp right but then we need some um, this uh, uh, energy to um, continue the um, oscillation so if the exciting force is pressure it means pressure is the main uh, force and if the gravity is the main force then they are the called the gravity mode so in case as i told you in case of the um, single um, um, in the strength this only this uh, n is uh, can we use to know the nodes of the uh, nodes of the oscillation in case of the two body uh, two body um, two dimensional body we need two parameters to um, uh, to um, uh, characterize the um, oscillation and in case uh, of the three um, dimensional like as in star we need three quantum numbers to um, uh, to um, characterize the um, oscillation right so basically what we need we we should have the knowledge of the radial order what is your nodes right and the degree how many lines are in the surface of the stars and azimuthal order and how many lines are passing through the uh, this uh, um, equator right and the pole right so what generally what generally uh, what these nlm describe the distortion of the stars caused by the propagation of the modes so if a if a um, uh, sound wave um, propagate in the star then they just distort to the stars and we what we measure the distortion in the stars exactly so uh, uh, so you can see here in uh, this is a um, uh, here l is equal to 2 means uh, these like as your um, uh, surface is divided into two parts one part is moving in one direction other part is moving in the other direction so these are the called sometimes a non radial pulsation in radial pulsation the star contact and uh, um, contact and expand preserving its spherical symmetry but in the non radial part one part move in one direction other part move in other direction or it um, one one part is um, hitting other part is cooling one part is coming to other uh, our side and other is going um, uh, far from uh, away right how much how much right so here you can see the here you see how the um, this one part here l is equal to 4 1 2 3 and 4 similarly here you can say 20 right m is equal to 0 because there is no lines passing through this poles and equator right so 20 it means this star is uh, oscillating in 10 uh, 20 direction right so uh, similarly here in 20 l is equal to 20 here you can see 20 uh, l and 20 m 20 vertical direction and the direction uh, in uh, longitude direction it's with zero because l minus m is equal to this okay so here you can see various nodes in um, case of the sun you see this these are the nodes it means one this part is going one part is moving one direction other part is moving in other direction so how then we do the seismology so basically what we have to do we have to collect the um, photons and we have to see the how much variation is in the photons so the change of uh, change in um, uh, photons with time is called the light curves and if you if we change the uh, this time uh, domain um, this uh, light curves into the frequency domain means using the fourier transform then we see the frequency spectrum so uh, if you see the here the light curves it's very difficult to um, calculate the um, here um, this um, uh, period but if you translate into the fourier um, analysis then we see the highest peak here at our 3.3 in this is in case of the sun right so here it means 3 5 minutes here is the oscillation is 5 minute it means the sun is oscillating with the 5 minute periodicity okay and also here see, we can see here that they are some, um, they are separated there is there is systematic sem, uh, difference separation between different peaks and these uh, peaks this separation is um, sometimes in large here you can see this is large and here you can see the uh, small variation the last separation is near the inverse time travel across the stellar diameter it means you can determine the radius if you have the radius you can determine the mass of the star independently of a single star or it is very difficult in case of the um, uh, eclipsing binary or double star you can determine the mass but in single star it is very difficult but using the 
seismology one can determine the mass of the stars very accurately and similarly the small separation if you see here i will show in the next slides you can determine the um, stellar age or condensation of the stellar core <coughs> so one of the huge success of the helios seismology is to um, uh, to um, to um, uh, to know means how the differential rotation takes place inside the star we all know the the sun has the differential rotation outside right you can see the equator is um, period is about 25 days it means move faster and the pole is here the period is 35 days it's moved slower but heliosismally help tells exactly as to that the inside the uh, convection zone the uh, star there is also differential rotation you can see here right so here you can see here you see the uh, this um, motion is uh, velocity is higher right right this part and here you can see uh, this uh, smaller right and here is smaller. so you can see very dif differential rotation one can notice inside the uh, sun as well this is this is also illustrated here right so this is the core of the center of the star and here up to con convection zone there is uniform motion right this is the center this is the radius right so you can see this is the uh, uh, this is uh, here you can see um, uh, this base of the convection zone and above the convection zone you can see at different latitude they move, they uh, rotate differentially, right. So this is the one of the success of the helios seismology. It was not known before the birth of the helios seismology. Then diffusion of helium because as you know there is um, uh, observatory it was found that the helium um, should have been uh, some certain amount but it was uh, there was one problem. Uh, because whatever in observation it was not uh, obtained, then the helios seismology explained what is the cause of the diffusion because the helium diffuse from the convection zone, right? And similarly, the uh, helios seismology also tells about the where, where is the boundary of the convection zone about 0.7, right? So these are the success of the helios seismology. So, <clears throat> so uh, if we see here, this is the if we apply this helio seismology or seismology technique to the star, then it is called the astro seismology. Here, I have shown here the uh, frequency spectrum of the sun, right? Here, you can see the large separation here. Large separation are two um, uh, consecutive um, uh, radial overtones with uh, same degree, right? So, here is L is equal to 0, L is equal to 0. Difference between L is equal to 0, L is equal to 0 and N is equal to 1 and N is equal to 2, right. So, that is called the large separation. Here it is 135 in case of the sun, 135 microhertz. So, if we know the delta, this large separation, one can determine the radius. If one, you determine the radius, you can determine the mass. If you know the value of the mass, you can determine the density. And here you can see the small um, uh, this separation that is that depends upon the uh, this sound speeds in the uh, core of the star and if you know the uh, this you, you see this is the small um, uh, separation if you can determine the small, small separation then you can determine the uh, condensation means what is the uh, condensation of the core and one can determine the age of the this um, star very accurately right how much condition how much helium has been converted into the hydrogen has been converted into helium it means that tells about the age of the star right so if we know the uh, this um, uh, this frequency correctly then you can determine the radius of the star and mass of the star using these relation so this diastrosism is the direct way to determine the um, basic parameter of the stars very precisely so <coughs> here if you see we have now we need the various tools to um, uh, what are the best candidates for the astro seismology. So as I told you the uh, multi-periodic uh, oscillating stars are the best candidate because they are different um, waves uh, penetrate to the different depth right. So those are the best candidates however here I have shown you here different pulsating stars those are used for the astro seismology here we have the sun right. So, uh, this is the sun and then solar light stars. Means solar light stars means those uh, those are the red giants, not in the main sequence, but their oscillation are like as the sun, right? They are excited due to the uh, these um, the acoustic oscillation, right? So, um, uh, these are uh, produced due to stochastic, 
um, uh, this phenomena in the uh, convection zone. And here you can see uh, white dots at the end, of, they are also called sheet. And here you can see the famous shifted uh, region, right? So, uh, so the using uh, this astrosismology, one can detect the stellar um, evolution where the star is there because you see here this is the uh, effective temperature, and here is the luminosity. The effective temperature can determine with uh, using the hydrogen spectroscopy very accurately, and and the luminosity can determine using the period luminosity relation. So, if you have the accurate value of the luminosity and effective time, then you can see that where, the, where is the uh, location of your star, at what stage your star is um, uh, placed, right? So, that tells about the evolution of the star. So, astrosismology requires long term interrupted high precision data, right? And that will allow you um, uh, tell you that why, why such um, uh, requirement is uh, necessary. So, if you know, and also the oscillation of the stars also tells about their size. So, uh, you have the different um, these um, uh, shape of the um, uh, shape and size of the various instruments. So, if you are, you have the um, various size, then it, they will uh, tune at different frequency. So, if you know the frequency, then you can tell the what is the size of your instrument. Right. So similarly, if you see here, this is the small uh, size instrument. This is the large size instrument. These two violins. So it means it depends also upon which frequency are at what length you are tuning. So it will tell you about over the uh, one can tell. Okay, what is the this um, size of this violin? Similarly, in case of the star, the, uh, this is the uh, shape of the sun. And in case of the sun, you get the such type of the frequency. And if you see the, some bigger stars, then your frequency will be. Uh, your period will be larger because it will take more time to come from the center to the surface and uh, uh, so on, right? So, so these uh, like as a musical instrument uh, in our um, uh, in our earth. So these uh, stars are can uh, consider as a musical instrument in our universe, right? So, so similarly uh, as these shift variables. So these um, severe variables, they act as a um, distance indi indicator. Here you can see the um, light curve of the shift. So if you know the period, because one can easily determine the period of the shift very accurately, and then one can determine the luminosity precisely. And then as a in return, in turn, one can determine the luminosity. So there are many stars in our uh, in um, our galaxies and uh, clusters are there, uh, open clusters are there, globular clusters. You see, these are the picture of the globular clusters. Many stars are there, and you can see the um, uh, many of them pulsate and they make sounds, right? Actually, they make as I told you, they make sounds, but we cannot hear them because the sounds we propagate in the um, in the um, medium, and if we and their frequency is also different, as I uh, told you. So, if we shift their frequency, keeping their frequency ratio and relation between the phase, amplitude, and frequency, one can hear the sounds um, from the stars. So, as I told you, that like a sun, there are many stars which uh, show um, uh, oscillations. So, this is the Alpha Centaurus A, and here you can see the light curve of this Alpha Centaurus. And here you can see the um, frequency spectrum. So what you can see here, the um, there are two regions of the um, prominent frequency. One the higher frequency range, other is the uh, lower frequency range. So this lower frequency you can see. So uh, here they are grouped uh, together here. Here they are the uh, at higher frequency. So it is considered that these are due to the P modes. Acoustic and here uh, some evidence of the G mode kind of things uh, in the alpha centuries, right? But the effort is still going on whether there is any G mode pulsations are found in the case of the sun. So now this is here till now I have uh, excluded the rotation. The star is pulsating. There is no rotation. It is completely spherical symmetric. So if you see here, this is the light curve of the stars observed from this place Nainital. Right, you can see how precisely uh, these photons are changing with the time. So, if we transform these time domain into the frequency uh, domain, then we see the uh, these uh, frequency peaks. 
so we can see here small peaks these are the harmonics just multiple of these main frequencies so if so if the star is rotating what it happens it's a uh, rotation what it does it's a main frequency split it into its components suppose if l is equal to 1 this um, uh, angular degree then it um, is non degenerate in case of the uh, non rotation but once the stars rotates uh, then it's uh, degeneracy split it and you will see the main frequency split into the two uh, its component right so if you can determine the separation of these um, side lobes then we can determine the rotation period very precisely so the, the uh, other beauty of this astro seismology is to determine the rotation period. You do not need to have spectroscopy because spectroscopy you, for the faint um, star takes a lot of time and uh, we need very highly precise data. But using the photometry, using the measuring the photons, one can determine the rotation period of the stars very precisely. So this is the other um, um, beauty of the astro seismology. So here what we have, I have seen here, as I told you, when one can determine the large separation and small separation in the frequency spectrum, right? So if you plot them uh, for the various stars, you can see these are the theoretical models. So just a place where your star is uh, located and using that you can determine the mass and age. Here you can see the age, this is decreasing here. So here you can determine mass as well as the age using the large and small separation. So this is called the astro seismic diagram, right? So these astro seismic diagram are very useful to determine the mass, age uh, and other parameters independently. And also one can using the high gas spectrum, one can also um, image these uh, stars um, for their any in homogeneity in their surface of the stars. Because as I told you in the beginning, uh, these variable stars are also intrinsic and extrinsic. The extrinsic is due to the rotation and the rotation is due to the uh, spots. So using the high resolution spectroscopy, you can map the spots of the stars. So if you have the um, maps, means in, ho in homogeneity in your stars, if the pulsation is there, if the rotation is there, this makes it very complex to the stars and one can uh, really map the stars very accurately using these uh, oscillations. So here at ARIES, um, we have uh, this uh, astro seismic program has been um, starting since 1999 and uh, using one meter telescope here, right? So for this uh, astro seismology, we, um, this is the inner view of the one meter telescope of uh, one meter, so ARIES, 1.04, meter sample and telescope and for the uh, data acquisition because the telescope just uh, gives the photons and ultimately we need some detector we develop one three channel fast photometer this is nothing just it uh, um, collects the photons very fast right in a small um, uh, time interval and so this is three channel, this means in the target stars and in one in the main channel we observe the target star and in the other channel uh, comparison star to see whether the comparison is also or some other stars is changing with its uh, changing its uh, flux with time and third is the sky whether it's the sky is uh, varying with the same um, periodicity. So this photometer was um, built with uh, in the collaboration of the ISRO in 1999. And because now the CCD has come into the um, um, this um, market, and they are very uh, they are um, uh, sensitive, and as well as uh, they have um, very high quantum efficiency. Now we uh, are planning to develop such a CCD three-channel CCD photometer in the collaboration of ISRO. So this is the one uh, light curve we uh, have, uh, we uh, observe from one meter telescope. You can see what nice. Um, uh, light curves um, is uh, shown here, and this uh, light curve was published in Astrophysics and Space Science Library. And the um, author has um, captioned a part of super of light curve showing the level of precision that can be achieved with the ground based telescope on a good site. So, um, even uh, this Nanita site at that time it was so nice, one can uh, get a very small, um, uh, very small amplitude oscillation in these stars, pulsating stars. So now, now we can, um, till now we have been detecting these, um, we have been studying these um, oscillating stars 
using the um, ground based observation the the i say the problem with the ground based observation is that we uh, have to uh, interrupt the um, observation due to the um, uh, uh, day break right then we have some gap, we have a gap one day gap and then again we have to start the observation so this gap what had, what it does it produce the um, aliases in the um, frequency spectrum so it is very difficult whether it is due to the gap or due to the rotation so as i told you that uh, if the rotation is uh, present then the main frequency is splitting to the it's a side lobe then it's very difficult to see whether it is due to the um, uh, rotation or it's due to the um, uh, uh, gap so uh, for that we need the continuous observation so here i have shown here that the how the um, gaps uh, playing its role here you can see the red one is the 30 days data continuous 30 days data you can see the um, precision is also um, uh, small because if you see here plus minus you, uh, this is the gaussian and you see this is the error and similarly here you see the 90 days this um, this um, con this compressed this gaussian compressed it means the error is small and similarly if you see the continuous four year kepler data here so here you can see four years main kepler data and you can see here the uh, these are very they are how how nicely they have minimized so the, so these continuous observation are very important for the um, accurate parameters right so for that um, this astrosismology uh, has been uh, people are doing uh, astrosismology from space in 2006 this uh, corot um, satellite was launched and um, aiming to uh, detect the um, planets exoplanets and uh, perform the astrosismology because the planets always moves around the star right and very and then we have to have the basic parameter of the planets as well how to determine the planets it's a very big task so if we if we find some planets some planet around the pulsating star then it is very interesting because using the astrosismology you can determine the basic parameter of the star right and as a two body problem then you can determine the para basic parameter of these um, planets right so uh, this astrosismology is very useful as far as the exoplanet science is concerned so then kepler was um, launched in 2009 some uh, march and its main aim was to um, uh, discover um, planets in habitable zone means where the uh, there is possibility of life and uh, then astrosismology of the uh, pulsating stars so then the question again is, is there any other earth uh, like as in our earth is there so if there any problem comes we can fly to the other um, earth right so if any uh, this um, uh, uh people are still um, uh, looking recently we uh, heard that there is one kepler um, planet and there is some uh, uh, evidence of the um, uh, because they are uh, that their property is similar to the earth right so, um, uh, so, so in case some pandemic comes then one can move to the other planets right so still the, uh, this effort is going on to uh, find any other earth right and here you can see the kepler um light curves of um, different stars and you can, as i told you that uh, depends upon the light amplitude of variation depends upon the um, uh, the size of the um, star it is shown here you can see here as the star size smalls and uh, amplitude is small and here you can see uh, this um, uh, they are depicted here so uh, the uh, Kepler revolutionized the um, uh, area of the astrosismology as well as the um, this exoplanetary science. So uh, since the Kepler was launched in 2009, the precision was obtained from uh, the per um, uh, ppt to ppm, uh, thousand to million, um, right? Micro or you can say that the amplitude of variation has been detected from micro magnitude to the um, milli magnitude to the micro magnitude from the ground base. one can detect the amplitude of variation up to milli magnitude but from the space you can detect the amplitude of variation up to the micro magnitude so the reversion uh, took place from ppt to uh, per point 1000 uh, per part 1000 to per part millions right 
So from a few uh, bright solar light stars, mm -hmm. two thousand of stars of different type and age. From so this is the um, um, main advantage of Kepler from physics and stellar inverse to physics of stellar course and observation of probing of the internal rotation, mixing and angular momentum in, uh, in the stars. Other earlier it was very difficult. Also the Kepler data also helped us to uh, derive the seismic mass, radius, age mm -hmm. and uh, 10 times greater precision for um, other stars, right, and compared to the uh, in solar stars particularly. So here you can see here I have shown here the light curves of his stars and you can see here the how, uh, how precisely we can detect the amplitude. Here you see 6 um, millimeter you can say, right. And it, it, it was very difficult to determine such type of light variation uh, from the ground. So using the astro seismology, one uh, this is the um, light, and this is a Fourier uh, analysis of a white dwarf BPM 37093. This star was this white dwarf of observed under the uh, from uh, ground based telescopes. And one can see here what I have shown to here the core of the uh, this white dwarf is made of the carbon. So carbon is the uh, is some, uh, so this is uh, diamond crystallized. So using the astro people have uh, probed the far interior to of this uh, white dwarf, right? So uh, because you see here the these are the multi pulsating um, stars. So because different uh, modes pulsate to the different depth, so uh, one people have um, mapped the stars uh, white dwarfs uh, up to the core. So um, what basically what we do, just what we do, we take the time series observations, means observe the pulsating stars, take this data and perform its frequency analysis and perform the mode identification because we have to have the value of the NL, right, or M, right. So uh, if uh, we have this one, then observe pulsation mode properties and then we compare it with the theory. Right, and try to minimize uh, the um, deviation between um, uh, observed and theoretical um, prediction, and then we see the okay, our model is correct. So one uh, way is to um, uh, means uh, both the observation and theory both are equally important, right? And we have to have one to one consistent between the observation and theory, right? So, uh, in the internal structure uh, and evolution of star, one can say that, okay, this star has this much uh, structure, but using the astrocyte, you can literally see what is going inside the, the stars, what are the different layers, where they are going up and down, right? So, the, after the uh, Kepler, uh, the, in 2024, uh, the ESA, uh, European Space Agency, they are planning to uh, launch a plateau searching for new words uh, close by and uh, us and uh, also the main objective as I told you similar to the Kepler to search for the uh, exoplanets and the secondary aim is to uh, perform the astro seismology uh, using uh, these um, high precision data. So um, here means stars are musical instrument they are big uh, like as uh, not like as our um, violins, uh, orchestra, and other instruments. So they are big. So you can see that okay, uh, here uh, what they are saying that okay, we have the big instruments, and um, and one we can play them and we can uh, listen them. So finally, uh, here the stars are not only twinkle. Uh, they uh, they are uh, they sing song right twinkle twinkle little star how I wonder what you are above the world so high like a diamond in the sky I showed the diamond in case of the white dwarf in the core of the star so star are beautiful they sing song they twinkle right and uh, so uh, this I acknowledge um, this on Google uh, Wikipedia. And I have taken material from the talks from the Don Cruz, Ponyas, and Garcia, and many others. Many actually video couldn't um, play today. Otherwise, the video were taken from the YouTube's and other resources. And various references from the Chris Engelbert, Dominic, and other renowned speakers. Thank you very much. I would be happy to uh, receive question from you. Thank you.
uh, if someone uh, yeah learn now questions yes uh, one question uh, uh, above r point r 0 0.7 uh, splitting occurs Uh, regions um, means uh, basically what I have uh, told here in case of the this convection zone R upon R 0 0.7 means the um, beyond that uh, this um, uh, their differential rotation take place like as uh, we see that uh, the differential rotation at different latitude right so inside the star also uh, this actually those are the not the splitting those are the uh, as, as, as that I showed you that was not the splitting that was the profile variation of the sounds uh, at the different depth So if someone misses today's live lecture, they can find it on Ari's Facebook page and also on Ari's YouTube channel. Please subscribe to your YouTube channel. The link to this site is available on Ari's official site. You can also submit your question later on and also provide your feedback by using the link available below the videos. Thank you very much.